Hi guys, in today's video, I'll be introducing you to the basic concepts of civil engineering. Now what is civil engineering? It is a branch under engineering which deals with construction, design and maintenance of different physical structures such as buildings, roads, dams, all of this comes under civil engineering. Now for the theory part, I'll leave a link in the description that you can read and go through. If you have any doubts or if you want me to do the theory part, please let me know. I'll get into it and I'll, I'll try to explain it in the future videos. Now the theory part includes the scope of different fields of civil engineering, the role of civil engineering in infrastructure development and concepts such as system of forces, Newton's laws of motion, law of parallelogram of forces. These are all theory part in the civil engineering. I'll teach you a problem today. Now if you want me to make a video on the theory part as well, let me know. I'll do it in the future videos. Now let's get into it. Now before we get into the problem, there are a few basics that I'll tell you now. Civil engineering is based on different types of forces, moment, weights, free body diagrams, loads, beams and many other things. We are going to see some problems on uh, resolution of forces. Before we start, let me explain about forces. Force is a vector quantity. It means that it has both magnitude as well as direction. Now what is magnitude? Magnitude is size. Okay, define something and right, left, east, west, these are the directions. I'll give an example. Uh, consider a force 30 Newton reacting in a direction, say east. That is why it is called as a vector quantity. It has both magnitude, that is the size, as well as the direction. Now we can define force in many ways. There are many definitions of force. Uh, according to the Newton's first law, a force is defined as an agent or action which changes or tends to change the rest the state of rest or uniform motion of a body in a straight line when a body is in state of rest now if you apply any force okay this tends to change the position of the body from the initial position to the final position so the final position is decided by the pressure you put but this happens only in one single direction right if you apply force that is a horizontal force will go in a horizontal way only it doesn't come backwards if you pull it it comes back it doesn't go front so you can apply a force in a single direction. If a body is constant in a constant uniform motion, okay, and you apply force, the speed increases and the uniform motion gets altered and it goes with a higher velocity. This is what Newton is trying to tell with his definition of force. There's a SI unit for everything. So the SI unit of force is Newton or kilonewton. Now if you consider a body which is in a state of rest and you apply a force, say 5 kN, the many characteristics that we can see here, they are the magnitude, the line of action, point of application and direction. Now the magnitude, as I said magnitude is the size right, so the magnitude is 5 kN and the line of action is horizontally from x to y that is from left to right, it's going in the horizontal direction and point of application, this is the point of application, x. This is where you are applying the force and the direction is horizontal direction. There are few principles of forces. Let's quickly see them one by one. The principle of physical independence of forces states that the action of force applied on a body is not altered by another action of force applied on another body. If you apply a force F1 on V1 and F2 on V2, the force F2 doesn't affect the motion of F1 as they both aren't related at all. Next comes the principle of superposition of forces. This principle states that the effect of a system of forces acting on a body will be equal to the algebraic sum of effects caused by forces at any time. In other words, the effect we get when we apply all the forces at a single time will be same as the effect that we observe when applying each forces separately, that is one at a time. Now let us say that you apply all these forces at once. What happens is that it changes its state of rest and goes to some final position. Now if we apply F1, F2 and F3 separately, that is one after the other, the result obtained will be same. This is what 
this principle tells us. Next comes the principle of transmissibility of forces. This principle states that a force acting on a body at different points along its line of action will produce the same effect on the body. Now I'll explain this with an example, you'll understand it better. Now let's consider a force P acting on a rigid body at point A. This is the line of action. Now if we move the force P acting on point A from that position to a different position on the same line of action, let's move it to point B. The final result will be the same. Object will move to the same destination. This is what the principle is trying to say. This principle is really important. Many problems related to this principle will be found in your exam. Now we come to the final important concept that is required for you to solve the problem. Let's finish this and let's get into the problem. The concept is resolution of forces. You guys need to concentrate more on this part. Now resolution is done only on inclined forces to resolve them into the vertical component and the horizontal component. Now let's see an example. Consider a force F inclined with an angle theta to the x-axis. Now when you resolve it into the horizontal component, you get FH that is the horizontal force or fx that is force in x-axis both are the same equals to f cos theta and when you resolve it into the vertical component you get fy or fv that is vertical force f sin theta what do you mean by resultant force when there are many forces acting on a body it can be replaced by a single force called as a resultant force so let's see what's the resultant force of all the forces in this diagram the first step will be to resolve all the horizontal components and add them to find fx, summation of fx. Similarly, the step 2 will be to get summation fy. Now, when you resolve this, you'll get two components, that is the vertical and the horizontal. The resultant of all these forces, r or fr, is given by r equal to root of summation fx square plus summation fy square. You take the summation fx which you have found and substitute over here, summation fy is substituted over here. You should square them and add them and find the square root of the sum. That is when you get the resultant of the force. And the direction or the angle of resultant is given by theta equal to tan inverse summation fy by summation fx. When you're resolving the forces into vertical and horizontal plane, there will be four quadrants that you will need to consider. Now consider object A. The force can act in any of these quadrants. In the first quadrant, the y and x will be positive. Second quadrant, x is positive and y is negative. In the third quadrant, x is negative and y is also negative. And in the fourth quadrant, y is negative and x is positive. When the force it acts vertically downwards, it should be considered as negative. And let us consider an inclined force of 10 kN acting on an object A, inclined at an angle 20 degree. Now by the principle of transmissibility of forces, this force has the same effect if we take it over here okay we can consider this force over here because as it is going towards the third quadrant in a direction towards the third quadrant we can directly take it in the third quadrant okay now we write the angle as 10 we write the force as 10 kN, 10 kN over here but how do you know where to take the angle now we need to go back to our lower classes the angle properties come into picture over here the alternate interior angles vertically opposite angles let me explain how i took 20 degrees over here okay firstly we are using the corresponding angle property consider this angle to be 20 degrees and these are the parallel lines according to the corresponding angle property the angle 20 degree can be taken here if two lines are parallel to each other and have a same inclination their angles will be same that is what corresponding angle property states so you understood this portion how the 20 degree came over here okay here i got it as 20 degree first step i took 20 degree over here after that we consider this portion okay now there's a second property that is the vertically opposite angle property it states that vertically opposite angles will be equal now this angle will also be 20 degree. This is due to the vertically opposite angle property. Again we apply the corresponding angle property for this portion. That is there are two parallel lines and 20 degrees over here. By the corresponding angle property we get 20 degrees here as well. Now all of you must be confident with the things that I just explained. If not just go through the angle properties once again. If you want a video on that please let me in the comment section. I'll, I'll make a video. Doesn't It doesn't matter. You got, you understood how I got the 20 degrees inclination over here. Now we need to resolve the 10 kN force into vertical and a horizontal component. Firstly write, consider 10 kN force. We need to draw the diagram of this in the third quadrant. 
This is what we get 10 plantar force acting in the third quadrant at 20 degree inclination. Now we need to resolve this into the vertical and horizontal components. In third quadrant, the first thing you need to know is y will be negative and x will be negative. Let us resolve this into the horizontal component first. fx equal to f cos theta. Now what is f? f is 10 kN and theta is 20 degree. So it will become 10 into cos 20 is 0 0.9396 which equal to 9.396 kN. Never forget to write the SI unit. This is very important. You get fx as 9.396 kN. And we need to resolve it into the vertical component f5 that is equal to f sin theta. f is 10 kN, 10 sin 20. 10 into 0 0.3420 that is 3.42 kN. As it is acting in the third quadrant, fx will be negative and fy will also be negative therefore this will become minus 9.369 and minus 3.42 kN respectively okay uh, i hope you guys got it now let us take another force of 20 newton acting on a in a direction towards the fourth quadrant at an inclination of 30 degree to the y axis here they've given the inclination with respect to y axis it is always better to consider the angle with respect to the x axis whenever you get the angle with respect to the y axis you need to subtract it with 90 and get it to the x axis now it is 30 degree so when you represent it in the x axis you get it as 60 degree 90 minus 30 is 60 always take it with respect to x axis it will become easier for you guys if you want to take it with respect to y axis uh, there are small complications that happen it's always better to get to take it with the right x-axis. Considering the principle of transmissibility of forces, I can take this 20 newton force to be acting over here. It have this. It will have the same effect, 20 newton force, and the angle will be 60 degree. In a similar way, we need to represent. We need to consider the 20 newton force and draw this diagram, and we need to resolve this into the vertical and horizontal component. The vertical component fx will be f cos theta, that is 20 cos 60. Now, this is happening in the fourth quadrant, right? In the fourth quadrant, x will be positive and y will be negative. fx is equal to f cos theta, that is 20 cos 60, which is 10 newtons. Remember, it is in newtons, so in newtons. And x is positive, as it is in the fourth quadrant, plus 10 newtons. And you need to resolve this into the y component as well. f sin theta, which is equal to 20 sin 60, that is 17.32 newtons. As it is acting in the fourth quadrant, y will be negative. Now I hope you guys have completely understood the resolution of forces. Now let's look at a very simple problem on uh, resolution of forces and finding the resultant of the forces and end today's session. We'll discuss more problems on this topic in the future videos. Let's discuss what this problem and end today's session. Now let's get into it. Find the resultant of the four forces acting on the body. They have given four forces. 200 Newton force acting uh, in a horizontal direction. 500 newton force acting vertically downwards, 300 newton force acting at an angle 30 degree, and 50 newton force acting horizontally towards the right. Okay. The first step will be to resolve the 300 newton force. This is how you need to approach the problem. Consider 300 newton force. Now we need to resolve this force into a vertical component and the horizontal component. This is acting in the first quadrant. You need to draw this diagram. It's, it will be expected in the answer paper. Now we need to uh, resolve it into horizontal and the vertical component. fx is the horizontal component which equal to f cos theta which is 300 into cos 30 that will give you 259.80 newtons. fy is equal to f sin theta 300 sin 30 that is 300 into 1 by 2 150 newtons now in the first quadrant x is also positive and y is also positive now you have got the vertical components and the horizontal components the next step will be to uh, find the algebraic sum of the vertical components summation fx okay here summation fx equal to 200 newton that is going in the right direction towards the first quadrant so it will be positive plus 50 newton same is going right side in the horizontal li lane 50 newton plus 259.80 okay when you add this you get summation fx equal to 509.8 newtons now let us find summation fy and summation fy will be equal to the vertical components here w is the weight of the object that is they have given it as 500 newtons and the weight will be acting vertically downward towards the third or fourth quadrant the y axis will be negative so you take as minus 500 newtons plus the other vertical component is 150 newton and when you add this you get minus 350 newtons some of you might think it wrong to get negative but it's 
correct guys you need to just follow the uh, the steps and whatever answer you get will be correct and now you need, need to find the resultant of the forces r is equal to root of summation fx square plus summation fy square that is equal to root of 509.8 square plus minus 350 square this will give you r is equal to 318.38 newtons now we need to find the angle or the direction of the resultant that is theta equal to tan inverse mod summation fy by summation fx here summation fy will be negative but when you apply modulus when positive so you get it as tan inverse mod 350 by 509.8 that will be 34.47 degrees okay this is the required answer you'll need to finally represent it in an xy plane and the final answer will be this as r is 618.38 newtons and theta is 34.47 degrees resultant is positive and this will be found in the first quadrant and this will be the answer the resultant is 680 618.38 newtons inclined at theta equal to 34 degree 34.47 degrees so this is where we end today's session subscribe to this channel and do comment uh, and if you have any doubts let me know in the comment section also check out the link in the description uh, take it easy engineers the link is in the description uh, bye for now see you in the next video